down, get down. Get down, get down. Hi, and welcome to the 13th episode. That's a great start. This is the tale of two sunset riders who faced impossible odds to find and play the games of gods told in the stories of old. Two outlaws that spit in the face of logic and traverse Belgian wasteland. Two bandits out for a steal. Will they return with legendary loot? Or will this prairie of retro games be their downfall? Find out in this week's episode of Flea Market Bandidos. Episode 13, here we go. Yep. Hello. <laughs> so today we had a annual uh, a annual market festival kind of, you know, coming up in Wodak, which is, as you may know, Stevat's hometown. Uh, the flea market, uh, the real market festival thing is tomorrow, but there's already some things, you know, going on in the weekend running up to that. And one of these things was a bunch of flea markets today. This episode is only going to um, show you one day of flea market hunting. And the reason for that is it just was an awesome day for flea market hunting. Uh, we found a bunch of awesome games. Um, yeah. All flea markets were nearby. We visited, we visited about three flea markets. Yeah, we visited three, three I think. Three, yeah. Yeah. Um, so on to the first one, a familiar one. The Rape Shack. Too many times. Uh, I'm sorry, we just can't quit the rape shack. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, it, the flea market it really is growing. I've said that before, and it is just amazing to see it grow. It, it got even bigger, and to be honest, it got even better. Um, this time, even bigger, even better, um, following the same trend as it did before. I got. Um, yeah, I got a couple of PlayStation 2 games now. Obvious was already surveying the area um, before me and Tasia could get up there. And um, he told me there were a couple of PS2 games, so fair enough. Uh, we went over and actually a lot of good PS2 games. And the price was also well, pretty awesome. Um, a kid was selling it, his mom was there too, but she said, well, you take care of it to a kid because I guess they were his games. I mostly found some PC games which neither of us really want to buy, except Steve at wants to buy them if they're these old time big box games, you know. They they really strike his fancy. But I did find found I did find yeah. did find a lot of uh, PlayStation 2 games and they were going pretty cheap. The, they belonged to this little kid though, I didn't know that at the time. There was this huge brother of his, I think, this huge beefy guy who said like, you know, it's two euros a piece and if you buy five you get uh, one for free. Which was pretty good because there were some pretty uh, good titles in there. I think uh, Steve had bought a Kingdom Hearts in such a deal, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I already have uh, Kingdom Hearts, I haven't played it yet, but I hear it's so great, so I really, really should, I know I should, but 
uh, yeah, it were those kind of games. Yeah, there were a lot of sport titles and some wrestle games with, you know, like, shut your mouth. But, um, there were some real prizes to be found there, so we decided to go through them and we each found like six games we really wanted, even more that we actually kind of wanted. And then uh, the kid who owned the real games, uh, who really owned the games, the little brother, he came back and said, yeah, it's five, buy five and you get two for free. Which was like a better deal than we were expecting. So we each bought another game and, and just paid 10 euros for seven PlayStation 2 games and pretty damn good ones. I'll show you mine. First <coughs> off, I bought, I think, the entire Jack and Dexter uh, collection. It's Jack and Dexter the Precursor Legacy. Precursor Legacy? Mm -hmm. Jack, and, Jack 2 Renegade. Jack 3. Um, just named Jack 3, I guess. Jack X, I don't know what happened to the other six ones, but... And then Jack and Dexter, The Last Frontier. I haven't heard of this one before, it's kind of cool. It's this orange box and I think it's about fighting airplane, in fighting in airplanes and stuff. So, it really does look pretty cool. Yeah, that orange Jack and Dexter game is the one I'm, I'm missing, I think, from my collection. Yeah, I offered, only one I offered you if you wanted to buy it. No, no, I think you're you're more into Jack. You would be more into Jack and Daxter games. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty much into Jack, you know. No, but um, <laughs> yeah, I like I like Ratchet and Clank, but I've played a bit of Jack Two, but just like ten minutes, and yeah. it's kind of different. It's kind of the same, but kind of different. Though it's made by the same uh, team, I think. Jack yeah, probably. It looks looks similar. Yeah. No, but I'm really happy with these, and these are only five of the games that I bought. These two, I also bought in the 10 euro deal, and it's Final Fantasy XII, which I haven't played, but I've heard it's pretty good, and I really like Final Fantasy X. Um, I've I've heard it's pretty good, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this game, because I don't know what to expect. I'm, I'm a huge fan, well, not as much as Nexus, but I am a pretty huge fan of, of uh, Final Fantasy, but there are a lot of games that I haven't played, and there is one game. Can I get you guys' opinion about uh, Final Fantasy X Part 2? Because I didn't like it at all. I didn't understand the game mechanics, and it, it just seemed like an excuse to watch uh, girls in, in cute outfits, which is a viable reason to play a <laughs> game, I suppose, but to build an entire game around that when you have, like, I don't know, that, that um, volleyball game like that. Probably like plenty that. of yeah. games. Yeah, there's probably plenty of games that do that already. Bubble bath babes. Leisure Suit Larry! <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. I, I didn't need X2. I, I don't know if you guys liked it, maybe I just suck at it, that's that's also very possible. Uh, and I also bought Rayman M. Uh, Steve Abt uh, was the one who suggested I take this one as my seventh. I wouldn't have taken it myself, I probably would have gone for like a generic, uh, a generic title of uh, Prince of Persia, which aren't bad games, don't get me wrong, they're just, you, have, you also have a lot of them and I haven't played any of them much because it's not my gaming type, you know, not my gaming style, if that makes sense to you. But he said this is a pretty fun game. I also bought a Rayman racing game in the previous game, uh, in the previous episode. So now I have two. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this because if Steve had says it's okay, then I, I trust him it is. When I saw the games, a couple of them, a couple of them caught my eye straight away. Um, Sly 2, I wanted to pick up Sly 1, but the kid didn't have it, but he had Sly 2. I've heard awesome things about this game, um, took a look at the back cover and it's kind of like comic book style, which is pretty cool in a game, I think. See, it just looks like an awesome game. If anybody has ever played this before, let me know what you think about it. 
Um, Kingdom Hearts, I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game. I've heard nothing but good about them and I've never played one. I expected to never find one either for like less than two game? euros. Yeah, I, I didn't expect one to find one. Um, we ended up finding two more Kingdom Hearts games at that same flea market by the way. But they were five euros a piece, so we passed on that. But I did pick up this for just under two euros. Um, I picked up two Prince of Persia games just for the simple fact that I've never played a Prince of Persia game in my life, never before. Um, it'll probably take me a while before I get to these games because I have quite the backlog, um, just as obvious as two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But I don't know. I might be pleasantly surprised by these games. Pick them up because they seem like solid titles to me. Just good games to have, I guess. I've heard those were pretty good games, by the way. Fair enough. Um, I also picked up three Sega games. Um, Sega games for the PS2. One of them being Shadow the Hedgehog. Now, I've heard good things about this in a review online. I can't remember which review, but I've heard good things about this game. Obvious has heard the opposite about this game, so I'll let you guys know how it turns out. I, I really don't have a clue anymore. And how honest. about you guys give us your opinion on this game? Yeah, because... it goes for every single game we show you. Give us your opinion, give us your thoughts on those games and uh, educate us a little. I also bought um, Sonic Unleashed, which seems like a generic Sonic title for PS2, so never a bad game to pick up. I think. For that I price. Hope. Yeah, for that price. Well said. Uh, this one I'm pretty sure is good. I saw Metal Jesus Rocks once again do a review on this game. He loves it. It looked awesome. Um, comparable and according to some even better than Mario Tennis for the GameCube. So I'm really looking forward to try this out actually. Seems fun, especially with two players. Um, at that flea market, the guy I mentioned before who was selling the other two Kingdom Hearts games for 5 euros was also selling um, Sega games, Sega Master System games. One of which was a boxed version of Aztec Adventure, which looked pretty cool. Uh, kind of reminded me of um, Legend of Zelda, just looking at the back of it. Kind of looked like... Sega's answer possibly to um, the original Legend of Zelda for the NES. So we picked it up, we, we played it um, today, a couple, I think an hour ago, yeah, yeah. an hour ago at most. Um, it seemed alright, we're having a little trouble with TV we're playing Sega games on at the moment, but it looked pretty cool, a little slow maybe, but pretty cool. One thing I, I find hilarious is that it says on the box for one player, which is like, one player is the given minimum. I mean, that's not advertising or anything. That's just, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what else? Is this gonna be a movie or something? <laughs> this game is a game. <laughs> Aztec Adventure, he asked four euros for it, um, but, and uh, he also asked a Disney game from um, Mowgli, uh, Jungle Book, Jungle Book, there we go. Yeah. Jungle Book. And for that he asked Loose Cartridge 2 Euros. Uh, I, I've heard of this game and I think it's it's not it's it's said not to be a bad game. We hadn't even heard of this game, which we kinda liked because it meant it was probably an uncommon title or something. Uh, we've played both of them, they both work, so that's great news. Um, our, comp our television is a bit uh, groggy at yeah. the moment, so we couldn't really see a lot, but this one uh, looks like a really good game. This one looks kind of like a slow game, but I'm happy. I'm happy we bought it, both of these for five euros. I think I still think that's a good uh, a good deal, and <laughs> it's just these old covers, man. They're they're so awesome. The Jungle Book. Yeah, um, Jungle Disney's Book. The Jungle Book. Very important because this game was um, 
made by Disney. Yeah, a par show. partially made by Disney. Um, Virgin Interactive helped, or I think they were just named Virgin back then. Like a virgin, touch for the very first time. But all in all, really happy with this. Um, we bought the two Sega games for five euros total. So that's pretty cool of the guy. I think yeah. that's a reasonable price. He was a pretty cool guy, and he he saw us filming. Yeah, he, he mentioned that he was also into. Um, well, he asked us first if we were also making flea market flea market videos for YouTube, and we said yes, of course. And and he mentioned that he was also into that kind of stuff, so. We gave him our name, Flea Market Bandidos, and um, hopefully we've got a new subscriber yeah. out of that interaction. Let us know. Let us know, guy. You know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. There was one more thing I bought at the Rape Shack Flea Market, and that is this. It's a controller for the uh, PC. Uh, Steve had informed me that it would probably work on uh, PCs. I. I am really not good with computers, so I don't know what uh, what would work or what wouldn't. Because I almost saw, almost once in the past bought a different controller, and he said, "No, no, no, that system that's not going to work anymore," or something like that. But he said this probably would. It looks pretty good. It's too bad it's not also a double for a. PlayStation 2 controller like the other one I bought, but on the other hand, for one euro, pretty good condition. Yeah. All buttons seem to work. It's it's a good deal for a euro. Deal. I think. Very good deal. So now we can play things on the computer against each other. Yeah, that is awesome, man. Yeah. Now we can do our uh, Pokemon Drunk Clock against each other. We can do a Pokemon Drunk Clock race or something, or just a VS right. Pokemon VS. Pokemon VS. We can do uh, we can do it on, on that uh, chart or whatever you call it that that guy suggested. Um, uh, Poke MMO. Yeah, Poke MMO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can try it. We can try. Sure. So that first flea market was a great success, and we're gonna try our luck at a second place that Steve had found online. Yes, right behind the corner here somewhere. So there's a lot going on in your neighborhood. Yes, there is. <laughs> We went to another flea market. We didn't even know there was a flea market there until Tassia mentioned it, I, I think. Um, it was kind of like... I think there used to be a nail factory there or or a copy center. The copy center is still there, it's next yeah, to it. Yeah, right, next to it. So next to the copy center, right behind my corner, was like, um, like one or two tables outside and couple of weird rooms with weird tables and then a lot of clothing not a lot of games one table had like two kids behind them and 15 ps2 games or something like that yeah a stack yeah no, not awesome games um, nothing like the ps2 games we found at the rape shack flea market well you can't have them all no second flea market was a little less uh, kind of a bust but yeah. you know really matter. still happy about the first one yep. There was also a fair going on in light of the annual uh, market uh, near Steve at home, um, and Steve had also said, you know, there's a there's a what do you call it, a sporting hall, yeah. sport hall, yeah, I guess, a yeah. gym, a gym, kind of. yeah, a gym kind of, um, a recreational sports center, I don't know, yeah. I don't know, something. It's it's a hall where you can go and play basketball. You know, and and soccer. So there was uh, one of those halls nearby Steve Vett's place. Um, we used to go there when we were uh, in middle school for yeah uh, for PE yeah for PE yeah. And there was going to be a flea market there, but because there were a lot of renovations going about as well, it wasn't inside the center, and it was on a open field of Wildeck, uh The yeah, I don't know how you call it, an open center. I, I'm becoming very confusing, I think. Wildeck Square, the town yeah. square of Wildeck. Yeah. Town square, yeah. Not, not to be confused with Steve Ed. <laughs> nice. Sfioro l'idea di realizzare compositivamente una canzone da cantare in coro, però. 
mi rendo al tresi conto quasi immediatamente che momentaneamente sto da solo e per cantare in coro il presupposto necessario mi sembra anche normale che ci sia più di una voce a far da controcanto a quella che fa il tema principale e qui almeno al momento la situazione non mi sembra proprio per la quale and it was this thriving huge flea market well not huge but it was just so busy that it seemed so huge and it was pretty fun because when Stephen was still getting ready I had a uh, I went to a bakery there and I, I went to get something you would call pastry I suppose uh, something donut like and uh, there was nothing there we, we come back an hour later later or an hour and a half tops and it was buzzing it was a complete beehive of video games and we were looking for that sweet sweet nectar these metaphors are, are really coming along I think yeah awesome <laughs> I'm sure everybody will like it yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure no um, but no it was amazing and the most amazing thing of all uh, I found something I found something pretty amazing but I think the steal of the day goes to Steve at there was a pretty big flea market over there well it seemed big it was really busy at first when I saw it and I saw the amount of people walking around I didn't think we were gonna find anything more there I thought everything was already big clean um, I was pleasantly surprised not shortly after I thought that because like one minute into the flea market I come across a couple of, well, a Wii game, a 3DS game, another 3DS game, um, like a variety of games and it just said 8 euros on the front. And I saw the first game and I asked the lady, is this 8 euros too? She said, yeah, yeah, sure. So I paid her and I walked away and the game was Pokemon Y sealed for 3DS. Um, really happy with that. That's an awesome purchase, man. That, that made my day. The PS2 games were awesome, but this game made my day. I've been wanting to play this for a long time now, ever since it came out. I actually tried to emulate it on a, on a flash card I used to play on my 3DS, don't help. But um, it didn't work for some reason. I don't think they have decent 3DS ROMs of Pokemon X and Y yet, so that didn't work. So awesome that I picked this up. Uh, now, if you're not into Pokemon, I can understand. I mean, I don't want to talk to you, but I can understand, but it is a pretty damn good game and it is uh, worth a lot of money. It's it, I think it can go for like 40 euros or something and he bought it for 8 sealed. That was an amazing find. Steve had's uh, find of Pokemon Y for 8 euros for his Nintendo 3DS was pretty amazing. I'm jealous. I don't have a 3DS, 3, 3DS, but I'm jealous nonetheless. But I did find something pretty awesome too. Uh, could you hand me my thingy magic? Of course, my good sir. I found this. It's a arcade stick for PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 with a pretty decently long uh, wire. Uh, all the buttons seem to be working well, we haven't tested it out yet. Uh, it's an 8 directional pad. Uh, it's, it looks pretty cool, it feels really cool too. Uh, I got this for 5 euros. The dude asked 6, I countered him with 5 and he went like, oh, okay, man, it's fine, that's fine. And I'm really, really glad I, I did this because I, I was doubting it and we were like gonna circle around back but I was like no then it's gonna be gone by the time I get there and he also had a uh, a blaster you know a Namco gun for six euros uh, which I probably would have been able to get for five two but I didn't because well five or six is not a bad price for a Namco gun I'm gonna go about and look for something bit cheaper. I, I, I'm gonna hold out. It's not that I need a gun. The only game I can play on it is uh, Resident my Resident Evil. Evil game. And as I've told you before, 
That is a true zombie game. It turns your brain into a pile of mush. Mush, yeah. Uh, let's let's say mush, yeah. Um. Oh, and at that same last unexpected flea market, uh, I also found one last game that I want to show you guys. God of War 2. I haven't played this one either, but I I know. I don't, not just that I've heard, but I know these are great games. Uh, and I got it for a euro and a half. The kids selling it won at two euros, uh, but you know, it's flea market. You can't, you can't sue me for suggesting one and then settling on one euro and a half. So I, I got this, actually it's, it's pretty weird because I got this after this semi-reseller, I think he was, or at least maybe he wasn't the reseller, but he was somebody who obviously knew about video games and who bought a few, but he left this one lying around. So I, I don't understand why. I think if I didn't want to play this one, it's in pretty good shape. It's Maybe got because the box, it's the got the platinum booklet. edition. Maybe. Some people don't go for that. I yeah, know. okay. Uh, Maybe, I don't but care I, personally. Think, I think it's still worth more than, than what I paid for yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. And I'm really looking forward to playing this. God of War, I haven't played any of the titles. Uh, I wanted to play the first one first, but well, if I have this one, I'm just going to go with this one. So all in all, a pretty damn good, good day. We got a lot of games. We got my new ASCII wear. Uh, arcade thing magic that I, I really want to test out on like Tekken or something uh, or or even fucking Spyro the Dragon I don't care I think it's perfect for fighting games man that yeah. would be awesome actually that, that makes sense with the um, eight directional click uh, joystick yeah because other games on PlayStation have like the full diameter of yeah. um, control so the full circle of control. Yeah. Though I, I also, for some reason, want to try and play Crash Bandicoot with this. I don't know why, but I really want to I play Crash that. Bandicoot with this. Did you guys know that? Crash Bandicoot, there were like arcade ports for that. They had it in arcade games that you had Crash Bandicoot levels. And the only reason why I know this is because it was on like one of the worst movies ever. The one with the, the where the babies are super intelligent. Uh, Children of the Corn? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a family picture. No. It's oh, actual yeah, I think babies I know. who are... Yeah, and, and they changed like the baby's mouths to like make them talk. Yeah, of. yeah. And they have like grown up voices. Yeah, indeed. And yeah. only the babies understand each yeah. other. And then Damn, that movie sucked. That bad. movie sucked balls. You're bringing back a whole heap of bad movie memories for me, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's almost as bad as look who's talking and look who's <laughs> talking now. <laughs> I think that's about all. Well, about all. That, that was pretty much. Um, I'm really happy with our pickups. I think this was a pretty damn good day, and it, it, it's just amazing. You know, we've had a long dry spell, uh, and then we have this orgasm of video games. It, I know it's it's a bad metaphor and I suck at metaphors and I shouldn't use orgasm of video games in a uh, in a show in which we talk about the rape shack, but it really was amazing. We've we've been struggling so hard to find any decent game games and yeah, there's a lot of PlayStation 2 games, but they are pretty damn cool titles. And we have two new Sega games and I have this and. I have the other controller too, and it is just amazing. It, it really gives me hope for the future. Feels good, man. Feels good. We went home as happy campers, basically. Awesome day. Um, decent weather, a little too hot for me, but awesome day. Pretty cool people selling the game, I, I've got to yeah. say. Pretty, pretty. Everybody was okay with haggling. People were easy going. Yeah. So, so that's awesome. All in all, really good haul, really good loot this time. Uh, if you like this episode and if you like Flea Market Bandidos and our channel in general, be sure to like, drop a comment and subscribe and maybe share, that would be awesome. And I guess I'll see you in the next Flea Market Bandidos. Bye bye. You know, let's try and buy this. Dude asked 5 euros for the controller alone, but we decided, you know, there are a few games, maybe we can pile some on, make a deal, 
and I found uh, Crash Bandicoot Warped, which I've been looking for. Uh, it's stupid that it's now just the disc because it's the wrong uh, box. I think Rayman the Great Two: The Great Escape is the box for it, and it doesn't have a booklet or or the front uh, page thingy. But I bought it for one euro, and that's actually all I want. I, all I need is the game. I just want to play it again, and I think it will work. So here's to hoping. So, one euro for that game, poor condition, not the best, but I also bought Rayman Rush, which he asked originally for a euro and a half for one euro. Uh, it's in German, I see that now. Auf in den Wettkampf, das einzig ein Rayman Multiplayer Spiel kann beginnen. 